Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Shree Banerjee, and in this video I'll be going over a little bit about how to use SAS. Um, it's not only an effective uh, data analytic tool that you can uh, quickly use to uh, make sense of thousands of points of data sets. Um, I would in fact say millions of points of data sets in some ways, but uh, the, the, the common uh, myth is that uh, SAS is uh, purely a syntax based program, um, uh, syntax based software, when in fact, uh, there are uh, currently now uh, more capabilities where you can use a uh, menu driven system. And a lot of us are uh, used to more of a menu driven uh, type of system uh, because of other uh, software that uh, uses this type. So um, uh, without much delay, I'll be uh, doing a demonstration um, here. What I'll be doing is uh, exploring a uh, commonly used uh, data set, uh, which is the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. Um, and the question that I will be looking at uh, in, in this clip is uh, taking a look at if there's uh, differences uh, in inflammatory biomarkers in those individuals that had uh, mortality as a result of stroke uh, versus individuals that did not experience a stroke um, as, a, uh, as a cause of mortality. So um, the association that I'm looking um, at is, is there a uh, significant difference, or or is there um, a a difference between um, C reactive protein levels in individuals that uh, uh, suffered stroke related mortality versus those who didn't? So the first thing that I'll do is going is is go into uh, tasks, and um, this is actually a uh, menu driven or task driven. Um, Sort of, sort of procedure. So let's let's select this, and then we'll go into the type of uh, analysis that, that that we're trying to conduct here. So you see, there's um, actually multiple options here. So you can go first, um, look, and see what options you have available. Um, under the data, you can um, go in and, uh, in fact. Uh, do some data cleaning. I mean, um, if you want to recategorize the data, um, or if you feel like you want to um, filter data, um, only look at uh, certain um, subgroups. For instance, if you wanted to look only um, in males, uh, then you can actually filter data um, in that way. So th there's there's a lot of options here, um, which you can use along with your data set. Um, and it's not syntax driven. But what is neat, and I'm going to show you this trick um, in, in, uh, momentarily, is that um, any sort of menu-driven or any sort of um, task-driven um, and selection that you do, you're going to have a corresponding syntax. So uh, what I want you to do is also pay attention to that syntax, but I'm going to go over that um, in a little bit. But now, um, if we're wanting to look at uh, specific types of statistics, what I really encourage you to do is um, look at this data exploration and what are some of the options. So when you select data exploration, um, this window in the middle kind of pops up and uh, so you have three panels. Now you have a panel on the left, a panel in the middle, and then a panel on the right. So before we just start um, going in and selecting menu items, I want you to orient yourself to what all of these panel items are. Um, part of learning a program is understanding where everything is. Um, sometimes people do this at the beginning, but I think right now uh, we should take a moment to do this. So um, on the top left, of course, you have SAS Studio, and that's what we're running. This is a cloud-based sort of software. And so in the middle, you have um, what you what's the data set that you're going to be working on? So um, the data set that we're going to be working on here um, that, that I'm going to be demonstrating through is the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. Um, and in that I had actually explored some suicide data, but that is not um, the focus of today's data. But um, some from that I'm uh, 
pulling some of the variables that are um, included within that data set. So how are we, um, so, so this is a data set. And um, again, you have the option of changing the location of where your data set is and then selecting another data set. So here, if you wanted to look at some other data set, um, you can go under another folder. But we're not doing that right now. Um, we already have the data set. So right now we're trying to select continuous variables that make sense. And remember, uh, when we started, what was the research question that we were looking at? Well, we were looking at the relationship between uh, inflammatory biomarkers and stroke mortality, right? Is there an association? So the continuous variable, what is the continuous variable out of the two variables? I'm going to give you a moment to think about this. So if you're thinking about continuous variables, right? Uh, C-reactive protein is actually a wonderful continuous variable. So which one of these, I'm, and I'm going to tell you because I know my variables already. And um, in your situation, you would have a code book. And at this point, what you would do is you would refer to that code book to see what each of these variables correspond to within a code book. And so if we're looking at LBXCRP, that um, if you were to refer to your code book, which um, I, I have, um, it would correspond to the inflammatory biomarker. So let's select OK. And then over here um, in the classification variables, let's take a look at a classification variable that makes sense. And remember, the question that we were looking at is looking at differences in stroke mortality. So I'm going to look for the variable. And so this is the variable that is um, a classification variable. So now, um, now that we have all of the data um, selected and pointed out, so now what we can do is, so th there could be a group analysis, a uh, further group analysis that could be conducted. For instance, if we wanted to see if there was a difference between males and females, uh, we could in, even um, group this analysis even further. Um, so uh, for this demonstration, uh, I won't be doing that. But in plots, um, what we can do is select what types of plots we want. So um, in this situation, um, what I'll do is add a histogram um, and then also box plot. So uh, box plot is one of those important ones that you want to pay attention to. Um, and as I'm doing so, I want you to take a look what's going on on the right um, is that all of these are getting populated. So um, take a look at these this this macro that gets activated here um, on line 20. Um, and um, it's it's good to refer your uh, refer to your code as which line the code is in. Um, getting accustomed to code and syntax, uh, it does take a little bit of time. But um, I want you to um, understand the differences between different parts of code. So first thing I want you to pay attention to, um, of course, is that the macro activation is important, but also the green versus the blue. Now the green is code, the, the green is not code. The green are notes that you have included, and this is important. The green are the notes that you have included within the code, the annotations, so that when you go back to your code, you know exactly what you were trying to accomplish within that code. So it's it's kind of your note to um, indicate what is being um, what is being processed in that area. So as you can see, um, there's some graphics that are being created, and here's a macro for the histogram, and of course in this. Uh, green, it's uh, the notes say histogram. Now, that is not being used in the programming language. All of the blue, the blue areas are actually being read by SAS. SAS is reading these as command prompts, which tells and instructs the program to take the next step. Now, um, you're not, the, the good thing is you're not needing to know any of that um, except for the fact that, you know, if you were to make changes, make minute changes in your um, visual, then you can you can actually alter the code um, and, and make those changes. And um, so this 
actually, I wanted to bring to attention some other things here within the coding language. So PROC is a very common SAS language. As soon as you see PROC, immediately you know this is part of SAS syntax code. So PROC is, um, is, is short for procedure. That's the procedure. And um, this is the, the, the um, type of language and uh, terminology that SAS decided to use. Now, um, SQL, S-Q-L, um, Structured Query Language, that is not unique to SAS. That is actually uh, a, a, another type of programming language. And, and so, um, so this is co combining, technically, this is combining SAS and SQL. And so a uh, structured uh, query language is something that it, you'll be seeing, uh, you know, uh, actually used in other programs and software um, as well. So now you can see um, if you're looking at univariate anal analysis, right? So you, what is univariate and, and where I'm reading from in the programming language is, is right here, univariate. So what is univariate analysis? Univariate analysis is simply going and exploring each variable individually. Very important, pay attention to this. So before you can conduct bivariate analysis, before you can conduct um, analysis between two variables, you want to find out what is going on individually with each variable. So technically, um, before conducting this bivariate analysis that I'm going over right now, um, we should have gone over a continuous sort of histogram um, sort of uh, distribution of C-reactive protein and characterize that first. But um, for, for the sake of brevity, um, I did not go into that. Okay, so um, these are some of the key points um, that we'll be going over. Now that I've gone over um, not only the programming language, but also some of these um, procedures for the histogram um, and, and, and how to conduct this, Let's now hit run. Let's select run, and you can select F3. And now the whole software is running. And so far, there's been, uh, uh, as you saw the program run, um, that, that, that was a brief three or four seconds, but that is the processing time by the memory. And so when this program runs, um, you actually have a log that is created. And I want you to get into the habit of looking in this log and seeing what types of things um, went on. And so this not only goes into the details of the log, but um, what types of operations took place. And sometimes, you know, something interesting might pop up that you might need to uh, pay attention to. Maybe there's an error somewhere. But um, for the most part, this was um, conducted and, and, and ran well. Um, sometimes when you're uh, conducting model uh, analyses that are um, using a lot more memory, uh, you might want to compare the um, amount of memory being used and, and, and use the most efficient type of system. But, but for, for this purpose, that, that is not needed. Um, now, th this is the output. And look at this. Uh, the visuals, uh, they, they are quite striking. They're, they have um, a lot of information in there. And... Uh, even though um, we have taken about 15 minutes to talk about this, the reality is once you get into the habit of doing this, um, this should take you um, less than five minutes. So here's the distribution of the C-reactive protein. So the top distribution is in individuals who have not experienced stroke-related mortality, and the bottom is of individuals that have related that that have experienced stroke related mortality. So here's the C-reactive protein um, in, in the two populations. Now taking a look at the distribution and now uh, the box and whisker plot um, and, and how how this is um, there's the mean and then uh, in, in, in the center and some of these statistics actually um, pop up as soon as you um, hover over the area. And so you can see, um, I'm not sure if it is showing um, within the screen, but you can see the median. Um, and you can see quickly if there is any sort of difference. And so uh, the mean is 0.625 for individuals um, in C-reactive protein, um, in individuals that didn't experience uh, stroke-related mortality. And then comparatively, 
the mean is 0.68 for individuals that uh, experience stroke-related mortality. So slightly higher. Um, now, is that mean statistically significant? Um, that is not uh, something that you can um, actually determine from this, but there are other ways that you can uh, determine that, um, the other robust uh, sort of statistical tests uh, that you can use. Um, so um, for instance, uh, continuous versus categorical with two categories, uh, t-test can be a really powerful tool um, with the assumption that there is normal distribution. Um, so this brief clip, uh, hopefully uh, you've seen how to not only use SAS, but also some of the more uh, basic sort of syntactical sort of language, but also how the visuals look. Um, I, I, I hope this video has been helpful. Thank you.